Hi and welcome back to Alistair Davis Golf. I'm here today at the Amandoara Golf Resort in Portugal filming a new video about how to create the perfect path. So path-wise for me there's a tolerance of about four degrees so I'll be very happy if someone comes across the golf ball by under two degrees or comes from the inside by under two degrees or has anything in between hence the four degree tolerance. Now depending on the shot shape the player would want to hit depends what path they would want. So if a player wanted to be a fader, then we'd want the path to be what we call out to in, which is cutting across the golf ball by under two degrees. Someone wants to be a drawer into out by under two degrees. This in turn will create a small shape in the golf ball depending on where the club face is. Obviously, if that club face matches the path, we'd have a straight push if it was into out and a straight pull if it was out to in. So if we have an into out path with the club face that is say zero to a path that's into out, that ball will draw and finish, well, turn into a hook, if I'm honest with you. It'll have a right to left shape, but it'll finish left the target. If the club face is one degree open, so one degree close to the path, that would be a draw shot. It's a very small tolerance to get that ball finishing target, as long as we strike that ball again in the center of the club face. Ending off center will affect the amount of curvature we have. So it's important, obviously, the strike is correct and the path is correct and the face is correct to get the exact ball flight we want. So if we have slight errors, again, they can make up for each other. So sometimes not quite perfect works really well too. So how do we create the perfect path? How do we know what our path is? So obviously if you can read the ball flight and know the strike, then you can read it from your ball flight. And some people struggle to see in the start line of the ball. So if you wanted to, you could put a stick out here and look at where does the ball start in relation to the sticks. Does it start left, does it start right, does it curve left, does it curve right? That is a way of assessing your ball flight. Well, what I'll talk today is more about using a constraint, using your head covers. And you'll see how I've got my two head covers down here. Um, and I put them down, you know, pretty much equal distance from the golf ball and front and back of the golf ball equal distance too. And obviously if we knew we were swinging a certain way, we can shape these covers slightly differently. But the idea in this is basically, this is a corridor for us to swing through. So when I'm swinging now and I actually feel I hit the inside corridor, for example, I might know then I'm coming more from the inside if I hit this part, if I hit that part, I'm coming more from the outside. And it might have to be quite extreme to hit these as they are right now, but I would certainly know that. So the idea may be then that we would do the opposite. So if we knew we were coming over the top, I might well put the cover back here a little bit, this cover forward a bit, and that will try and neutralize my swing path a little bit more through the ball and the impact zone. The other way of doing things as well, if I know I'm coming over the top all the time and making this kind of move and hitting these covers, I might well then try and make sure from a learning process, I practice either the opposite or I practice the same and the opposite so I understand the difference. So what I mean by that is if I'm coming over the top, I might well go, okay, this is my bad move. This is what I don't want. And I'm going to tell my brain that as I'm doing it. I'm going to talk to myself. So what do I want? I want this. So I'm trying to practice the exact skill I don't want to have, and then I'm gonna tell myself what I do want. So it helps remind me what the wrong is and what the right is. So that's one way of kind of telling my brain, okay, what do I want to change and why? What is wrong, what is right? Okay, let's do the right move. The other way of doing it, as I said, is we can move these head covers around to give us that kind of constraint feel and that evidence feel. As I said, if I was too much from the inside, I'd move this cover back to the right, move this cover forward. So again, the corridor would be, I could swing this way as much as I want, but I could never swing from the inside. So if we don't know what we've got, we can start with a very neutral setup and then adjust. And also we could try and do these swings. Well, okay, this is what I don't want. This is what I do want. Let's go with what I do want and then hit. It's a way of just training your brain, training your brain what is right and what is wrong. Let's go ahead and hit a ball and see if we get any feedback from these covers. We shouldn't do. My swing path is fairly neutral. I tend to be about one degree from the inside if I measure it on Trackman, so it should be fairly safe for this, but I'll just hit one to show you how it works. Okay, and ball flight wise, that one had a tiny, 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 tiny bit of right to left movement on it, but started probably pretty straight from where I'm aiming, and it just had a tiny bit of right to left movement on it. And again, I didn't touch the covers at all. So I would deduce from that that my path was pretty neutral. And again, that's backed up from what I see on Trapman all the time. Even though my swing plane isn't what I want quite often, the path is. I have the conversations in place to make it work and impact most often. Not every time, otherwise I'd be shooting crate scores every time I play. 
but it works most often I get the control of the path. I don't always control the club face as well as I want, which is why I'll get some curvature I don't want, but that's part of the beauty. I would then know I've got to work on my club face more based on this test and the Trapman numbers I know and so on. So how we get the perfect path is by analyzing what we are, practicing with barriers down to nudges the right way, and also possibly, as I said, creating the swings that will show us the opposite so we understand what we want. Again, part of kind of skill acquisition sometimes is if we're hitting, for example, a lot of slice shots, we might then try and hit a lot of hook shots to understand how to get the club face closing and the path moving to the right to then be able to go to neutral. And if you're neutral and you want to understand and feel what the club facing path is, what you might well do is try and hit the biggest slice you can, the biggest hook you can, a moderate slice, a moderate hook, a tiny fade, a tiny draw, and then a straight shot. And then within every shot you hit, you're learning where the club face and position of the club is swinging in directional terms as well to give you a greater understanding and feel of what neutral is. So again, it helps you get back to neutral. Hope you've liked the video on the path and how you can check your path and create the perfect path to hit straight shots. If you have, please click like down below. Also chat down below, tell me what videos you wanna hear from me in the future and ask any questions you have and I'll be sure to get back to you as soon as I can. Also please subscribe, it means you get all my videos free of charge and you get notifications every time I launch a video. So it means you don't miss a video then. Also massive thanks again to Amandwara Golf Resort. I hope to see you again here soon. Good luck and happy golfing.